Thank you for joining the Sons of God YouTube channel. We invite all viewers to subscribe to this channel, also turn on the full bell notification, so that you can get notified on every of our posts. Brothers and sisters, in today's video, we will be sharing with everyone, the prophesies of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. This prophecy is an eye-opener for many, and we are going to be saying it as we read it on the website of Mary, Refuge of Souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the heart of the faithful, enkindle in them the fire of divine love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I came across a very intriguing prophecy attributed to the late and well-respected Catholic Archbishop, Fulton Sheen. The prophecy is about the false prophet and the false, counterfeit, church. So, I decided to post it here, Mary Refuge of Holy Love, as it is certainly relevant for those who frequent the blog. Also, you can read the larger article from where it came from at this website romancatholicman.com Please visit the link on the video description. God bless. Here are the actual words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, from 1948. Here are the actual words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, from 1948. Satan will set up a counter-church which will be the ape of the Catholic Church. It will have all the notes and characteristics of the church, but in reverse and emptied of its divine content. We are living in the days of the apocalypse, the last days of our era. The two great forces, the mystical body of Christ and the mystical body of the Antichrist are beginning to draw battle lines for the catastrophic contest. The false prophet will have a religion without a cross, a religion without a world to come, a religion to destroy religions. There will be a counterfeit church. Christ's church, the Catholic church, will be one, and the false prophet will create the other. The false church will be worldly, ecumenical, and global. It will be a loose federation of churches and religions, forming some type of global association. A world parliament of churches. It will be emptied of all divine content, it will be the mystical body of the Antichrist. The mystical body on earth today will have its Judas Iscariot, and he will be the false prophet. Satan will recruit him from our bishops. The Antichrist will not be so called, otherwise he would have no followers. He will not wear red tights, nor vomit sulfur, nor carry a trident, nor wave an arrowed tail as Mephistopheles in Faust. This masquerade has helped the devil convince men that he does not exist. When no man recognizes, the more power he exercises. God has defined himself as I am who I am, and the devil, as I am who am not. Nowhere in sacred scripture do we find warrant for the popular myth of the devil, as a buffoon who is dressed like the first red. Rather is he described as an angel fallen from heaven, as the prince of this world, whose business it is to tell us that there is no other world. His logic is simple, if there is no heaven there is no hell, 
If there is no hell, then there is no sin. If there is no sin, then there is no judge. And if there is no judgment, then evil is good and good is evil. But above all these descriptions, our Lord tells us that he will be so much like himself, that he would deceive even the elect, and certainly, no devil ever seen in picture books could deceive even the elect. How will he come in this new age to win followers to his religion? The pre-communist Russian belief is that he will come disguised as the great humanitarian. He will talk peace, prosperity, and plenty, not as means to lead us to God, but as ends in themselves. The third temptation in which Satan asked Christ to adore him and all the kingdoms of the world would be his, will become the temptation to have a new religion without a cross, a liturgy without a world to come, a religion to destroy a religion, or a politics which is a religion, one that renders unto Caesar even the things that are God's. In the midst of all his seeming love for humanity, and his glib talk of freedom and equality, he will have one great secret which he will tell to no one. He will not believe in God, because his religion will be brotherhood without the fatherhood of God, he will deceive even the elect. He will set up a counter church which will be the ape of the church, because he, the devil, is the ape of God. It will have all the notes and characteristics of the church, but in reverse, and emptied of its divine content. It will be a mystical body of the Antichrist, that will in all externals, resemble the mystical body of Christ. But the 20th century will join the counter-church, because it claims to be infallible, when its visible head speaks ex cathedra from Moscow, on the subject of economics and politics, and as chief shepherd of world communism. This were the exact words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Brothers and sisters, let us be careful in following the multitudes of Christians who will support this counterfeit church. The devil is wise like a serpent, he will use our relatives, our friends, and families, to try to lure us. If the false prophet does not succeed by signs and wonders, to deceive the church, he will try to succeed using our spiritual shepherds. Let us look out for what is coming. Our very priests and bishops will try to convince us, we must discern for ourselves this time, we must ask the Holy Spirit to give us the grace of discernment. God bless you all. Let us give this video a like, and let us thank the Lord for the revelation of his word, and lastly, let us share this video to our family and friends, so that they won't be deceived. God bless you all. Amen. Let us pray. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. O Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt before the throne of God, we place in you all our interests and desires. O Saint Joseph, do assist us by your powerful intercession and obtain for us from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, we may offer our thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, we never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. We dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in our names and kiss his fine head for us, and ask him to return the kiss when we draw our dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell 
Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.